You're watching the Plantex Vodcast. Join us as we explore the inner workings of all things plant-based and all things Plantex, from the products and lifestyles to the people behind them. Now welcome our host, the man who combined his love of e-commerce and the plant-based lifestyle to create Plantex, Sean Dollinger. Hey everyone, welcome to our uh, eighth episode on season two of the uh, Plant X Vodcast. Um, you know, at the end of the day, what Plant X is all about is your one stop shop for everything plant based. So if you're looking for meal delivery, groceries, just a community to learn and educate yourself, that's really what Plant X is all about. Uh, this past week, we had our opening uh, of our you know, it had been open, but we wanted to really uh, have this grand opening at our X Market grocery store in um, Squamish, BC. And it was unbelievable the turnout that we had. Uh, hundreds of people came, even though it was raining out. Uh, Beyond Me, who was nice enough and generous enough to sponsor the event, uh, supplied us with over 250. Uh, Beyond Burgers, and literally there was a lineup for a couple hours, uh, and the place looked amazing. Our team, um, Kelly and Lauren, who joined recently from a marketing perspective, they really knocked it out of the park. Grace, the general manager of the facility, uh, really brought everything together. So just wanted to take a second and thank uh, the team for such a successful event. And then for our Canadian viewers, um, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. We took off last Monday for that. And uh, today on the show, we have uh, Candace Nelson, who, uh, who started Sprinkles Cupcakes in uh, Los Angeles. I've been a huge fan for a very long time and uh, really excited to have her on to speak a little bit about uh, the presence of vegan um, cupcakes and the trend that she sees in the industry. So on that, Candice, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Awesome. Well, um, thanks again for taking time out of your day, Candice. And we'd love to start off the show by asking, how do you take your coffee? <laughs> I love that question because first of all, I love coffee. I could not live without it. And secondly, I think a lot about this because when you drink something every day, you want it to, you know, sometimes you got to mix things up. Um, but really my go-to is milk, uh, milk, either almond or cashew milk. I like it because um, it's dairy free and it doesn't have any additional gums or anything that can sometimes be upsetting um, to my stomach. So yeah, it's usually either milk, cashew milk or milk, almond milk. And I try to do, you know, no sugar. And that, that feels, fuels me pretty well through my morning. Awesome. And uh, I love hearing people's, uh, you know, take on how they take their coffee, just because everybody, you would think that it would be pretty standard, but it's amazing how through, you know, our 40 episodes, not one person's taken it the same. So, uh, you know. That's so interesting. Oh, yeah. And I have experimented with lots of, you know, like the superfood creamers and that sort of thing. And I love that too. And I get my little like immersion blender going. And um, I, I would love to hear how all of your guests are taking their coffee because I'm always open to new ideas. We've got to do this like highlight reel of all of them, which would <laughs> please, be really cool. Please. But yeah, I find like when it gets cold outside, I love mine hot. And then, you know, during the summer months cold and the whole mix. So it's just interesting how the body calls for it. But, um, you know, I have been visiting uh, your spots throughout Los Angeles for, um, you know, over a decade. And uh, obviously we've seen vegan become some some sort of a trend i think it's here to stay obviously mm -hmm. you know i don't believe that it's just something that's here and, and gonna go what what do you see what made you start jumping into uh, making vegan cupcakes and the flavor is still unbelievable in them which i love thank you so much well um just to give people a little background i started sprinkles cupcakes here in los angeles in 2005 and um really the impetus for sprinkles was i i I wanted to create a place where people could come and enjoy and be together and feel united because we live in such a divisive world <laughs> sometimes. And I, I just wanted a joyful place where people could come together and enjoy something simple and delicious. And 
what I realized pretty early on is that I wasn't completely delivering on my mission because I didn't start out with a vegan cupcake. Um, and so I would have people come in, you know, with a friend who was vegan or, you know, they were going to a birthday party and they wanted a, a couple of the cupcakes to be vegan or they just wanted the whole party to be vegan. And I thought, oh my goodness, I, I need to learn about this. I need to understand a little better how I can bake a vegan cupcake and have it be super delicious because when you're not used to cooking or baking in that way, it can seem a little intimidating. And I wasn't sure that it would taste as delicious as the original. Um, but I knew it was important to do. I knew I had to deliver on my mission of, of you know, um, being a place that was open to everyone. And, and I wanted to be sensitive to that. So I set to work developing a vegan cupcake. And I thought, if I'm just going to do one to start, I need to do our best-selling cupcake, which was red velvet. So I set to work um, making the red velvet uh, vegan and, you know, infuse some coconut oil in that frosting. And what's so funny is as it turned out, there are a lot of people who do not eat vegan, plant-based in any way that prefer the vegan red velvet, prefer the taste of it to the original. And the original is like, that is our bestseller by far. So that's really saying something. Um, so it really opened my eyes to, first of all, the demand um, for vegan products, but also just how delicious they can be once you have a little experience working with those products. I love that. And um, you validate exactly what we preach here. You know, I'm just someone sitting in Vancouver and I could tell everybody how great uh, plant based eating is, et cetera. But then having someone like yourself on our show who validates that people who are not even vegan come in and they're blown away by the taste. And that's really the message that we're trying to say. Just give plant based living a try. You know, it's OK if you don't if you're not a hundred percent vegan, just enjoy and jump in. So I love Absolutely. That. And you know, what's great about it is that it's so easy to do today, right? Because there are so many incredible products on the market and just more and more every day. So whereas in the past, maybe you had to do a, a little bit more in the way of substitutions. Now it's like the substitutions are at your fingertips, right? I mean, you have um, these egg substitutes, you have vegan butter, you have all of these things that you can literally you don't even have to think about it. You can just, they do the substitution one-to-one -one for you. Um, and it's incredibly easy now to do. hundred uh, percent agree. I've been living this plant-based journey for a little over 10 years and I've really seen it on the dairy side of things, mm -hmm. you know, these different cheeses that are out, all these different oils, et cetera. It's quite remarkable and how they melt because that was obviously probably a big challenge for you originally in, um, in plant-based cooking. So, and then uh, I, I think there's some really exciting news with uh, obviously the launch of uh, Pizzana. Is that yes. how you pronounce it? Sorry yes, Pizzana. Pizzana. So, so um, gosh, maybe, I can't even remember, maybe five years ago now, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't remember when we first opened, but we opened a pizzeria here in Los Angeles. The first one was in Brentwood and the second one was in West Hollywood. Um, and it's Neo Neapolitan pizza. So our chef is originally from Naples, Italy. Um, he grew up, you know, baking with his aunt and came to the United States with $200 in his pocket and like a sourdough starter. <laughs> and so it's this incredible story where we came together and we came up with this concept um, for the most incredible incredibly delicious pizza. And what's funny is when we first were doing, you know, the recipe development for the menu, we said to Daniele, Daniele Uditi is his name. I said, you know, you're going to have to come up with a gluten-free pizza because half of Los Angeles is gluten-free. And now saying that to a pizziolo from Naples, Italy, you're not sure how it's going to land. Right. And he was all in, like, he was like, I'm going to make the best gluten-free dough you've ever made. Not only that, he was like, and we're going vegan too. I didn't even have to ask him. And literally just a couple of weeks ago, we did an entirely vegan menu tasting. I mean, he has nailed it. We have this um, fungi, this mushroom pizza on the menu that is based with like, typically the base is like a dairy-based crema. And he has created this cauliflower bechamel that we swap in um, for that. And then, you know, tossed with these delicious mushrooms and onions. It's exceptional. It's exceptional. So, so it's been really fun for me to partner with someone who it comes from another, you know, 
culture entirely food wise and understands and is having so much fun with with plant based cooking. That's awesome. And I love the recipes and everything. When I looked at the uh, the menu, it looks unbelievable. Can't wait till I'm down in Los Angeles next time to give it a try. Please, and, please let me know. And we got to, I definitely will. And uh, we, um, we got to add that some of these recipes, et cetera, to our website for our whole meal delivery, because it, it just looks unbelievable. And I love what you hit on and people look at me sideways. Sometimes they're like, what's going on with, um, with sourdough, right? Because you, oh, right. you said that came with a starter and people are like, there's a mother of sourdough. <laughs> this is so confusing. I know it's a little off topic. Do you want to give the 101 on that really quick? Well, no, I, I don't necessarily want to give the 101, but I do want to say that like, you know, starting in COVID, people got really interested in bread baking and specifically sourdough bread baking and pizza making and all that because people had time on their hands. And good bread baking takes time. It takes time for that dough to develop. And and just to speak to our pizza dough for a minute, um, obviously that that starter came from Italy from Daniele's family, and he's just been feeding it ever since. And a little bit of Italy literally is in every single one of our pizza doughs. But, you know, the fermentation process takes two days. Um, and basically, you know, that's when that dough is developing the character. Um, you know, the fermentation is happening. The bacteria is going to work. And um, that's what creates that incredible character in the chew and, and the char ultimately when it, when it goes in the oven, but also a real lightness to the dough. I love that. And uh, again, 100% agree that like I eat gluten free 90% of the time. The only time I make an exception is for sourdough. There's this whole debate is sourdough even healthier than, than gluten free, but we don't need to get into that today. <laughs> let's, uh, let's not get people uh, adding us. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I know you touched base on it a little bit on the on the show today. Um, the trend in the mm. products to people believe, oh, plant-based living is really hard or plant-based ingredients or recipes are hard to execute on. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll speak to um, baking specifically. You know, one of the most exciting things I think that's happened to vegan baking in a while is this um, discovery of aquafaba, which, you know, is that liquid that's left over in the can of chickpeas. And because one of the hardest things with vegan baking is um, the lack of, of being able to use eggs because eggs, you know, they have so much function in a baked good. They add stability and structure um, and fat. Uh, so, you know, to be able to find, first of all, there's tons of great egg substitutes on the market, but then to also be able to find this new uh, aquafaba and work with that has been super fun. And um, one of the desserts I really love to make uh, are meringues. So meringues are basically whipped egg whites, right? And sugar. And um, you can do incredible things with meringue. And so that's been one of the things that's been hard to do, um, you know, traditionally in vegan baking. But now working with aquafaba, it, it whips right up. Up. You can make these crisp, delicious meringue cookies. You can do meringue on top of pies, which we're coming into pie season now. Um, and, and if you want to take it one step further, I love making whipped cream with, with coconut cream. And um, I love how that whips up just like, you know, traditional cream. And you, if you layer those meringues with the coconut cream that's been whipped up and then fruit, it's the most heavenly. It's like, a, you know, a vegan eaten mess, basically. It's so delicious. <laughs> love the passion. Got to try <laughs> some of those pies one of these days because uh, I just love it. And you speak really from the heart on how I see the whole industry trending. What I love is because we're this platform, all these products want to come to us and mm -hmm. it's a, what the plant-based space has seemed to push people to the limits to find new products, new ingredients to create such yumminess and mm -hmm. incredibleness. So um, I, I hear from what you're saying uh, that you're aligned on that. And I guess on, on that note, where do you see the industry trending to, um, well, I think it's just going to grow. It's, you know, going vegan is one of the most like impactful things you can do um, in terms of combating climate change, right? And it has sort of ethical and, um, you know, personal health and environmental, um, 
you know, ramifications. And, and so I think it kind of started as that people, you know, they just wanted to be cruelty free, um, at least in my experience, you know, the vegans in my life that I knew was about being cruelty free and it was about personal health. And now it's really about like understanding the larger global um, impact that your, your food choices have. So I think, you know, listen, um, the environment and, you know, global warming is the number one concern of Gen Z. So this isn't going anywhere. It's only going to get bigger. Um, and it's funny because I have, there's a French bakery down the street in Beverly Hills. It's called Chaumont. And it's, you know, just this very traditional French poisson, viennoiserie, all of these beautiful French pastries. And it's always had a line out the door. So delicious if you love that sort of thing. And um, sure enough, I saw they were expanding. And just recently, they opened another location right next door, and it's Chaumont Vegan. And so you can find all of their French pastry, viennoiserie, croissant, veganized. They're making their own vegan butter. So I like to say, you know, when, once the French are making their croissant vegan, like this is here to stay because they are very finicky <laughs> with their croissant. So, and I've also really enjoyed the rise of um, vegan ice cream. There's a restaurant here down the street called Craig's that's quite well known actually from being in the paparazzi, uh, you know, pictures quite a bit, but Craig is, is the purveyor of the restaurant. He's a friend of mine. He's a great guy and he, they've got a quite a traditional menu, but they started making this vegan ice cream and it developed this cult following. And now he's, you know, packaging it, it's being sold into stores. And I recently, um, met the uh, founder of Sunscoop ice cream, which is a plant-based vegan ice cream. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I hear it's amazing. So I am personally enjoying the rise in vegan products. I'm finding them super delicious. You can feel better about your choices and it's just kind of a win-win. Yeah, that's great. And uh, I agree. I keep seeing all these new things popping up all over and it's just fun to give them a try. Some of them are just unbelievable. So, so fun. Um, you know, people join us uh, live and we love to uh, uh, let them ask questions because it's not all the time that they get to ask Candace all these questions that they might have at the end of the day. And um, sorry about that in the background. We are live. so I love it. Do... Anything can happen live. <laughs> yeah, right. Why my dog's not barking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on that note, um, and then we like getting live questions, feedback, positives, negatives, mm -hmm. anything that we could do to make ourselves better at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And this week with the successful launch of the Squamish store, and we have Hillcrest San Diego opening up a whole revamp in Venice. Um, Grace, who literally worked around the clock to make sure everything went great. We want to get her out a, an assortment of, uh, mm -hmm. of the plants that we've launched in Canada. So we'll go ahead and uh, mm -hmm. get that off to her. And uh, I guess we'll ask you one more question. And then if you're all right, we'll open up the floor to a few more, uh, few more questions from sure. the audience. So, um, you know, there's obviously this trend and this uh, big upswing in plant-based companies. I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you are an investor in uh, up, up and coming companies in the plant-based space, but what kind of advice do you give? Uh, Absolutely. No, I think, as I said, you know, the market is only growing larger um, for plant-based products and, um, you know, companies that are, are focused on food sustainability and um, plant-based products are definitely where I would be putting my money right now. I have recently in a couple companies, I tend to um, invest at an earlier stage in the in a company's life because I'm a founder myself. And so I really like to support, you know, startups and founders um, before they go public. So I'm an angel investor. And recently I invested in a vegan dog food company uh, called Wild Earth, and they are just growing like crazy. And you know they've developed their own plant-based protein, so the dogs are getting their protein, but it's a much cleaner space. And I also um, have invested in a wellness reset called Chroma Wellness, and it's basically a cleanse you can do. Um, and they just launched 
there, there were a couple products that weren't vegan, but they just launched a vegan version of their reset. And I can't recommend it enough. The products are delicious and um, the veggie broth is excellent. So yeah, I, I definitely believe in the space. Um, personally, I enjoy it, but also like from an investment standpoint, I think it's a really, it's a really great bet. I'm not giving investment advice to anyone else. I'm just telling you what I've done. <laughs> yeah, no, 100, 100%. And uh, I definitely believe in the whole uh, pet side of things. Uh, we only have a few brands right now. So we'd love the recommendation or referral on the company you're speaking about, because as I mentioned earlier, we're a platform. So yeah. we want to sell all amazing products. Uh, we're up to about 5,000 to 10,000, depending right now what's in stock, what's out of stock. And That's then unbelievable. You see, yeah, it's the team. Michael leads the merchandising team with Alexa, and they just do such a great job in finding and any email that ever comes in, or for example, when you're speaking about products on the show today, uh, we take it really seriously. We mm -hmm. jump into it right away because you never know what's the next hit. You know, right. Just Egg came out, sells off the shelf. Like you wow. can't even keep it on the shelf in Canada. So um, we'd love to hear that because Ami, which we carry, I, I believe it's one of the few that we do. And every day you see literally half a dozen, a dozen sales coming in for uh, for that product so i uh, love love how you've identified that section of it um so here are a couple um couple questions that have come in uh what are uh what are some of your favorite vegan brands to bake with oh brands um i'm terrible with brand names uh give me a second on that give me a second on that <laughs> You know, what's, you know what's funny, and this is what I brought up with the team before, I said, I don't want to compete on the shelf with mm -hmm. our own brand, our Plant X brand, to compete, for example, against a Midday Square or a snack, mm -hmm. you know, or even um, competing against just egg, for example. It's right. so hard to create this product with a following. But here, one of the number one bakers, in, in my opinion, in the U.S. as far as pastry, uh, you know, pastry cooking or baking go, I should say. Um, I always thought single ingredients, for mm -hmm. example, like uh, almond flour or, um, you know, different types of sugars out there, because mm -hmm. it's so hard to identify. You look more at what the product is than the brand itself. Which oh, well, I'm so visual. So that I have the brands in my head, but I, I'm having a hard time remembering names <laughs> like if there was a, a multiple choice i'd be in <laughs> that's why i just think there's so much room because it's driven a lot when people go to the the stores to shop etc that you know they're not really that connected to a brand per se when it comes to a single ingredient i i think you're absolutely right i think that is the challenge and that's the opportunity because i'm such a brand person right and the fact that i can't <clears throat> like mention a brand name right off the bat, it speaks to the opportunity of these companies to come in and really own their space. Hopefully Michael's watching because you just validated what I've been saying for months. <laughs> so thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> I didn't realize it, but I'm glad I'm on topic. Awesome. And here's, um, we've got two more questions. We've got a lot of questions, but I'll just ask you two more. I love this question. What has been the most effective marketing medium mm -hmm four sprinkles cupcakes, print, word of mouth, social media. I have to say word of mouth is what got sprinkles off the ground. We had customers who just loved our product and they were our brand ambassadors. And then sure enough, you know, we're in Los Angeles. Some of those brand ambassadors did end up being people like Paris Hilton and, you know, um, Oprah Winfrey and Jessica Alba. So that's really helpful. But honestly, well before any of those big names were talking about us, it was our neighborhood who were just telling their friends, bringing the cupcakes, um, spreading the word. Those people would then come back. I mean, there, there really is nothing that beats word of mouth. The closest we have these days is influencer marketing, right? Because you want to have a recommendation from someone you trust. And, and there's nothing better than um, a friend telling you. I mean, when you want to like, you know, 
find something on Netflix to watch or go to a movie or whatever it is, a new restaurant. You ask your friends, right? Um, probably the second best is is celebrities that we trust. So so both have helped move the needle um, for sprinkles. And then, you know, it's been a long journey. And, and it's not just about like getting the word out. It's about the consistency and the um, keeping that product excellent and consistent. And the same with the customer service. It's, it really becomes um, very operational, right? It's about just like delivering on your mission every day. Um, but those things really help light the match for, for the growth of our company. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm definitely guilty of uh, trying to bring as many people into your uh, cupcakes and seeing their expression when they when they try a vegan cupcake and being blown away by it. Oh, that, well, thank that, you. That, See, that brand ambassador. There you are. <laughs> thank you so much. No. And uh, here, here's the last question. I think this is a good one. Um, by the way, so active today and we changed uh, the time away from our regular time. So it's blowing me away how active it is. So. Uh, everybody must be uh, loving the conversation. So many athletes are showing better performance on high protein, protein plant-based diets. Do you have any high protein recipe favorites from Kimberly Carr? Well, again, I'm going to speak to my favorite desserts, but I really love like, you know, almond butter, chocolate chip cookies, basically, you know, pumping baked goods with peanut butter, almond butter, and, um, all that, all those great, you know, nut proteins, I think are the way to go. And then any place that I can add chocolate, although that has nothing to do with protein, but it's just such a nice combination. Awesome. Well, Candice, thank you so much for, uh, for taking time out of your afternoon. I know you're extremely busy and, uh, I know oh, our it's my pleasure. I'm so, so delighted to speak with you. Congratulations on this incredible company that you built. I mean, I'm really, I'd like to interview you next time. <laughs> Look forward to it. Hopefully in person. I'm hoping to be down in Los Angeles in the next little bit. So perfect. Uh, Looking forward to it. Thanks again. All the best. Best of luck with everything. Can't wait to try, uh, try your restaurant. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. So thanks again to our shareholders and investors who take time out of uh, your busy days to learn a little bit more about what Plantex is all about and the relationships, the partnerships, how the vegan space is growing, the plant-based space, plant-based recipes. We just see the sales keep increasing. Again, to have hundreds of people come out to the Squamish grand opening. Uh, what we've learned over the first six months or so on the merchandising front, on what attracts people to the store, bringing in unique products that aren't necessarily available in Canada. We're going to start our same day delivery throughout the whole um, Vancouver, Lower Mainland, Squamish, Pemberton, Whistler, all out of that location. And uh, that launches in the next couple of weeks, which we're really, really excited about. Thanks again, thanks again to uh, Beyond Meat, who supplied over 250 um, burgers, uh, which got raving reviews. People kept coming back for seconds. And um, yeah, the, the, you know, the way that I see this whole plant-based space moving and hearing the feedback when people were having those burgers and saying, wow, these are actually better than beef burgers. And I just think it's the time that we're in. Why can't people change? Why can't people try new? And uh, really that's where we see the industry going. And I'm just still so thankful to when Plantex got started a couple of years ago, two years ago, April, 2020, so not even two years ago, and uh, the traction that we've seen, uh, I believe our timing was absolutely perfect. And thanks again to our investors, shareholders, customers who believe in us and support us. And um, yeah, till next time, stay curious, stay planted, stay healthy. Cheers. Thanks for watching the Plantex Vodcast. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more information, go to investor.plantex.com. See you next time.